And let's take a quick look here. Um, it adds, I think, 11 new um, scenarios, different campaign starts, um, you know, for the grand campaign. Um, plus looking at these, some historical, some al alternate uh, history. Um, this one, I believe, is what, what if scenario. Yeah, explore what might have happened if Monstein's 11th Army had not been transferred from Crimea to support the siege of Lebanon instead maintain, uh, maintains a plan to have it support the drive into southern Russia. That probably would have been a smart move, seeing how things turned out. Relatively static front up north. Uh, but, okay, so we're going to be playing today um, Race to the Caucus. Caucus. Um, what I really like, and we're going to to read this, um, is that it really puts you in a um, historical situation. Yes, we, there's the one I just highlighted that's alternate history, and those are clearly labeled. But you can play. I have just, quite honestly, time to get down and play. You know the whole campaign you know, starting in 41 and try to play that. And there, that's great because you can decide, you know, concentration on the north or concentration in the south or whatever. You decide these things. That's really good. But this is looking more at a strategical operations for a particular army or army group commander, depending on the scale. And dealing with what they had to deal with, the situation they had to deal with at that time uh, for the war. And it's a really good, and they're doing a really good history with this. And hello, Crunk Drug, how you doing? Looking forward to seeing the Finns. Sure, the Finns are great. Um, uh, yeah, more hooray for the Finns. Yes, hello, Beam Slam, my friend. And ouch, Cube. Uh, Saturated with the Finns here in the USA on our NHL teams. Okay. Um, National Hockey League, I presume you're referring to. Uh, I don't follow most sports ball. Yeah, I know. Hockey isn't a sports ball thing. Okay. But let's look at this here. Um, July or 25th of July, 1942, Rostov on the Don has fallen to Army Group A. Phase 1 of Operation Blue is concluded. Operation Edelweiss begins with the 1st Panzers and 7th um, Tenth Panzer Army, supported by the Romanian forces, driving into the Caucasus regions to capture the oil-rich region and secure Germany's fuel needs for the duration of the war. Wouldn't have done that, but nice goal if you could have, or a nice goal if, to have, but if they, no, you know, I can talk about maybe that later some other time. I know I have. The Soviet forces are disrupted and scattered, but are quickly reorganized and reinforcements from the Transcaucus front along the border with Iran are being sent to stabilize the, li um, the lines by the Soviets. Uh, clear the Caucasus, okay, access player overview. Clear the Caucasus region, secure Black Sea ports, and capture um, oil regions around Grozny and Baku. Hold Army Group B's right flank along the Kalmuk Steppe and possibly capture vital port at Astrakhan. Um, AP's turn um, 10. Well, I think they're, they're um, well, action points like per turn is 10. Um, this, this is a um, 17 turn game here. Yes. Um, okay, so we're going to play this. Now we're going to call this Space Let's Play. So we have a save group for this if we come back to it uh, sometime. Because I don't know if I'm going to be presenting this or another scenario next time we look at this. We will be. All right. Just get an idea of the map here. Um, we, you know, Stalingrad. So we are not, this scenario does not um, directly connect to the Stalin Stalingrad campaign. Now, um, just, uh, I know, you know, I also do YouTube um, uh, videos on playing this. 
the master right now at looking at the Stalingrad campaign, I know many of you know of him, is TIK. Um, he's been doing a deep dive into this campaign. It is a extremely important campaign of World War II, and unfortunately, there's still a lot of holes in our knowledge on it. But I will. I have always contended um, once the initial push for um, Stalingrad fails, they should have stopped pushing and basically pushed, cut the river line and cut this rail line up here should have been um, the move. And then see about pushing. But once you cut these two, because we can sort of see with this map, I don't know if this is meant to be feature complete out here, I doubt it, but there really is no rail out here. And if you, yeah, okay, some rail to here and, um, you know, see and up there. It's really a difficult mess. So um, we can see why. And hello, Barold713. Good to have you as a subscriber here on Prime. Good to have you back. So um, that we can see how Stalingrad here, this basic area, is a linchpin. If you don't secure this, whatever you do down into here, at least long term, once the Soviets get organized, then um, it's so easy to cut off. It's so easy to, to put pressure. You don't want to have your, your forces strung out along here. You want to short, because this is sort of desert out here. You want to, um, and yeah, you can maybe supply a division or two or something with trucks across this, but no no army, um, probably not cores, you know, or a core. Um, but so this is, this is the point of somewhere up in here is where you need to hold this. Hey, Tony First Gen, yes, out today, if you're interested in it. Um, and so that's what we're looking at here. I have Fog of War on, as you can see here. We, we've identified some units, and yes, as down here we know that there is, you know, a, is this, a theater command down here. Um, but we don't know what the intervening terrain is and, or, you know, units like, um, and we don't even know the strength of some of these units. Yes, full disclosure, and just in prepping for this, because I got the DLC um, about two days ago, a um, little bit yesterday and a little bit this morning, didn't even complete the first turn, just sort of some opening moves and looking at things. Hey, Karnach, good to have you here. So um, just to sort of get familiar with this, because I don't play this game enough. I, I love the game. It just, it's a big time sink um, to get into the details. So um, that's why um, I've played much. I'm not, I don't know if it's all, but much of the standard scenarios for the, um, the base game on this and was sort of running out of those um, because I, I like, I like to, the, the scenarios for me time-wise is something I can manage to do and complete. Uh, so I really like that about this game, and that's what this is. Okay, news events. Give us, get us what's looking at. Okay, scenario overview. We just read basically that at the start there. Operation Blucher. Um, German 11th Army is poisoned Crimea to move across the Kret Strait and conduct supporting offensive operations along the Black Sea coast. The units will be... Um, ferried across the straits with the Sybil Ferry um, pontoon catamarans, like we're seeing there. Um, the Soviets still have a sizable Navy presence in the Sea of Azov. The Soviet naval base at Temerik must be neutralized, and the opposition at Tamankaya, I'm sure I'm butchering some of these names, must be cleared before the German and Romanian forces will be cleared to cross the Kret Strait. Okay, so that that is important to know. So we must clear out. Uh, there is, a, I think, a naval base there. You can see the anchor there, and then maybe come down here and clear this out before we'll get whatever's coming across the strait. So keep that in mind so we don't just say push you know deep in here and ignore the coast we need to take the coast or at least the um, ports along the coast order number 227 not a step back okay this is um 
the enemy throws new forces without regards to heavy losses and penetrate. Right. So this is this is the Moscow no step back order. Um, these things are stupid because eventually Hitler is doing the same sort of thing. When you're losing, and I know that this is, and we label it historical commentary, so we're, I'm giving some. When you're losing a battle, force integrity, your force integrity is important because um, If you're going to lose the the city, the mine, the factory, the the railway um, uh, junction point, anyways, delaying the enemy and having your force destroyed is not going to achieve anything particularly useful. Now. Um, that being said, sometimes you will leave forces to um, to be destroyed that will allow your the rest of your force um, to to escape to continue to function. Um, you know, so you can do you know tripwire forces you know all along the border or all along the front, and knowing that they're going to you know get destroyed because they're going to, you know, indicate where the enemy is actually attacking and in strength, and then you can react to it with your reaction forces. There are, but a blanket order of a no step back is just stupid. Okay. German situation report. Herr Field Marshal, the final victory of the Wehrmacht's final summer campaign in Russia is to be yours to take, right? Final, final. I, I get the, the irony there. Um, Operation Blue is in full swing. Phase one has been completed. The um, mighty um, Rostov has fallen, and the Soviet Southern Front is a shattered remnant of an army. In addition, uh, Voronezh has fallen to the Second Army, and the Don River will be used as a bulwark to hold. Yes, that's what I was talking about. That the idea of that is is excellent. It's just they get too focused on pushing into that damn city. Um, and so I don't know that we need to read more of this because I do want to get into um, operations because this game is detailed and takes time to play. I'm going to try to play it sort of slowly um, while entertaining you, um, not just um, focus in on the game, but try to like I'm talking about. Okay, phase one. Um, BVs at bay. Okay. Um, Panzer divisions became stranded for days. It was a bad day. Okay, so. Right. So this is where we are. Current summary, well, we haven't really done anything, so we're turning that off. They have given us um, oh. I thought I saw um, theater commands. Okay, maybe not. Oh. The float, Romanian army. All right. So, um, Starting phase. Now, I'm, again, partially for time, partially for... Look, with, with air units, you can go in and um, specify where you want them to attack. You can specify their altitude of attack so that if you put them up high, um, they don't, um, you know, for the bombers and whatnot, um, they won't do that effective of a bombing job, but also the anti-aircraft will have um, minimum effect. So, yes, it is it is available. Oh yes, I presume also um, barreled. It is on. I presume I just I haven't looked on the um, matrix site for it. I presume it is there. I am sure if it is the same price. Uh, always look for sales. I. You know, I always suggest looking for sale, but it's the same price. It helps slithering out if you buy it on their site. I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's going to stand as so long as it's also available on Steam. I believe they will give you a Steam code. So if you want to download it and play it through Steam, 
And I believe they will give you a Steam code if you buy it on the Matrix site as well. They'll give you a Steam code. I believe so. The only time that that, that I know that isn't true is when uh, the game is not uh, on Steam. Uh, then obviously they can't give you a Steam code. So if you want to buy it on the, the Matrix site, you can um, buy it there and they'll get uh, a, a better percentage, but they can generate a Steam code if you want to play it through the Steam system, if you wish to. So um, keep that in mind with your purchases on this. Um, yeah, 30% of the price, absolutely. Um, Spearhead Gamer, good to have you here. And hello, um, Mun Kurt Strap. Sorry, but being bigger cut is better to buy off the dev. Yes, absolutely. If you can and get the Steam code, that is best. I recommend it. Um, because look, um, yes, because I'm presenting here for Slytherin, I get the game for free, obviously. Um, so with any game you have to look how many hours you're going to put into the entertainment that you get for the game and then you look at the cost and you go oh watch that 10 cents an hour 50 cents an hour even a dollar an hour that ain't so bad um and so you always have to factor in how many hours you're going to play a game likely to what it's going to cost you know so you know Figure that out and then, then figure out whether the, the price is good for you on a particular game or DLC or whatever that is. And this is just general advice to figure that out for what you're you're doing. Um, but with a game like this, it's never going to be, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, Call of Duty or or um, even a Panzer Corps. Um, too. It's just never going to have that big a popularity. So we fans of detailed wargaming are always going to, because if you don't have a big enough player base, it's always going to be a bit more expensive because they put a lot of time, a lot of effort. And we're going to be looking at, the, at what that time and effort gives us here um, coming up. Great. Thanks for the link, Spearhead. Um, what I do, um, impulse buy it and play it for 30 minutes and give up. Well, you can do that too if your budget can afford it. Uh, absolutely. Um, because sometimes it's just good to have the games because um, you want to support the industry and the fancy will, oh, well, what do I want to play? I'm bored with what I've ever been playing. Well, here's this other thing. So, okay. So like I say, this is really detailed. So what I have it up here is we're using the AI, in a, a, AI uh, so, uh, um, automated air system, the automated AI air system, get that down right. And so it's going to do the air operation. So we're gonna let execute the air directives. You can see here. Yeah, there. We can see it. We can see it, the progress bar down here as it's thinking through its air operations. We can see all the different strikes that it's doing. Hopefully, it's doing a good job. And if you have the time and want to dig into it, okay, we lost you know eight aircraft in this group, two, three, one. So we had minor losses and some damage. Right, we have to do some organization. And I will say if this type and what you'll see me do here, if this type of action doesn't really interest you, this may not be the game for you. Um, I, I want to, I really want to state that I, I want to present this game to you, not try to sell you on this game. So you understand what's going on. Okay, the first Panzer Army under um, Edward von Kleist, um, sort of the main panzer leading guy in, um, you know, uh, Falgelb, in which um, Guderian and others served under. Right. Well, he currently has, we can see the units under his command, but I want to um, take which I know is Gross Deutschland, which has been broken up into um, brigades here. At the start of this, instead of that, instead of a coherent um, division, I want to move them under um, the third Panzer Corps. So what we're going to do is come over here, click on here, click here, and third Panzer Corps. 
and this will do several things. One of them is the command radius. Um, and this is one thing that I have at times been bad with. I'm going to try to do better here is keep the HQs because we can look here. Okay, so we have the third Panzer Corps here. Now we can see um, assigned support units here. The 14th Panzer Division had been the only thing assigned uh, as a unit on the map, as we can you know see it here. We just added the Großdeutschland Motorized Division to it in three brigades. I don't know. Um, this is what the developer um, of the scenario um, thought is the most historical situation to start with, not necessarily the optimum way to play it out. We will see in how much terrain we want to try to um, deal with versus how strong the enemy is. Now we also have um, units like this here, which, oh, oh right left click okay click here we can see here this is a um, unit that has 10 105 millimeter um, field cannons field guns so um, that is operating and will support these other units meaning you don't see that and we also have like a stug battalion here now we can um, which has only 17 ready stugs. Um, we can um, see about uh, change unit HQs around if you wish to, to um, reorganize some of that for um, different elements of your offensive. But if we keep these all sort of not turning um, when you click at them turn sort of red around them meaning the hq is close enough elements of the, the support elements support their attacks and will do so even better on a deliberate attack versus a hasty attack so you need to keep that in mind now we need to get through here okay um Um, yeah, De Angelis here has two Jaeger divisions under his control, and um, oh, who is this? I don't recognize the picture. Um, Eugene Oat here. We're gonna we're gonna move up the HQ to here. We don't really want to get in contact with the enemy, and we're gonna try to move the forces that are to our our rearmost to do the initial attacks. Okay, as we can see here now, that is um, 1.9 to 5, and if I hold down the shift key, it's 3.9 to 5. So we are, we'd be attacking against a superior force. We're going to move up this infantry division as well and get both units here. Let's see now. Both divisions with HQ support, and that enemy was routed. We've been watching XTRG play, and he micros absolutely with the division strengthening. Oh, XTRG is a better player than I am on this, most assuredly. So, if you're looking for a good tutorial, I mean, you know, I love all the guys who who stream here on Slithering TV. If you're new, please hit the follow button. Love to have you around and also begin to pimp out this channel which does help me and as well as the other guys um, follow the channel the more you watch you'll earn free um, games and DLCs from Slytherin and Matrix you can just scroll down and look at the Sliss store and they'll give you details on how to do that but yes XTRG is um, better at this than I well I'm trying I'm trying to present the game um, trying to entertain you guys with historical talk and all of that I hope I do that well enough he doesn't really explain his methodology as he does it and that's along with logistics seems to be key to mastering this game if any if uh, you can add to your color and commentary would be appreciated Sure, and I, and I will try to keep up with what why I'm doing, what I'm doing. Um, 
And so, like I say, what what we have here is if you look at these, and, and again, XTRG is a more detailed player than I am. We have two numbers down on the bottom here. I'm presuming you all know that, you know, 2X is like a division, and, well, I guess this is technically 3 is a regiment and 1X is a brigade, however you want to label out. Sometimes I call these brigades, but you'll probably catch me. Brigades or regiments, it's definable back and forth either way. Yes, thanks for following um, here. So um, the two numbers. First number is the attack value. The second number is basically... Um, action points if you will which can be used up in moving or attacking and it takes more action points to do a deliberate attack which was what we just did here so by using this um, idea here we're taking units that are in back using them to move use up some of their um, points to move forward and break through and then break deep into the enemy with um, the units that are on the front line to sort of push in deeper is what we're looking at doing here. So um, now for some reason, I mean, I'm sure it's historical, uh, but some reason this um, division here um, is under the 24th Cor Mountain Corps, which is the Mountain Division here, but we have here the Oh, this is, no, this is 24th. What, oh, is this 24th Mountain Corps, I guess? Um, well, I don't know. This one here. Um, no, it's, the, oh, nope, mis misread it, 29th. Okay, but we're going to um, click here, and we're going to, unattach him here and we're going to no we're going to cancel this action and I want to make sure I can go to the right or oh yeah the 24th there we go 24th so that's this core here so this way we're going to be closer to the to the HQ that we'll need um, to operate with this I want to move him and him. Now what I'm doing here, um, I'm going to prepare because we can look here and we can see that we need to do a deliberate attack and we need to have both of these um, controlled and for two to one. I'm also looking at the train and seeing if we, if I were to come across the north, he'd be defending behind a river here. We also have this um, unit down here, this division here. Which one? Okay, they both have the same amount. Um, no, I think we're going to save all of the the action points. Boot them, don't tickle the... No, no. This one. Deliberate attack. Okay, so we should get a two to one. I want to make sure. Okay, so they were routed and pushed down into there. Go oh, back that way. So we are clearing the way through here. Now I'm going to bring up this division, which we will get a three to one. Okay. Um, this looks like we can do three to zero point eight. So we're going to do that first. Out that division or unit. I want to make sure I hit this as hard as I can because we're not going to really get much more attacks out of that this time. So we've got this core moving up, clearing out here. Now I'm going to move this headquarters up to here already. Get it forward. I'm going to move the 16th Motorized Division. Now, again, let's take a quick look here. Like I say, the work they've done on this is remarkable. This is their current, um, the, some damaged, these are the ready units. So this Motorized um, Division has 11 Panzer Jaeger 2s, 
display ground element. Okay, so okay, so these are a um, uh, a a version of the Martyr Two is what that is. Um, at least that's what's in the photo. I'm not used to seeing Panzer Jaeger Two, Panzer Jaeger Ones, yes. Um, and then here is the long barreled um, long barreled fifty millimeter Panzer Threes. Um, and we have 32 of those. These are the long-barreled Panzer IVs, the very first long-barreled Panzer IVs, the F2s. The Fs are the, sh the same model of tank, just with the short-barreled 75mm, um, uh, and still they have um, 30, oh, um, 19 Panzer II Fs. So we're still, they're still um, using Panzer II Fs. Here, we're going to come up to here. We're going to look at this. Okay, this is looking like it's because we're going to have to come across the river basically however we do it. And I would rather do a deliberate attack and get this done now. And here we can also get there effectively. So now we've pushed them back around here. Yeah, I call yeah, I okay, Martyr 2 um and the photo has uh, there was a limited number of them that used a different road wheel system than the standard Panzer 2. Um and they were sort of meant to be sort of an upgrade experimental or whatever version of the Panzer II with large road wheels instead of the smaller um, bogey system. Um, and I'm not going to try to dig the photo up again. Um, and it has sort of a taller box that they put the um, the Pack 40 on. Those are sort of limited um, production of those, and that's maybe what they're trying to specify in there. Most of the Martyr IIs are... Um, Purpose built on, um, uh, you know, on they stopped producing Panzer II hulls and they basically produce um, the hull with slight variations that is used for the Wasp, the 105 millimeter field howitzer, or the Martyr II. And that, that they keep in production through to the end of the war on and the, the slight variances to them, but it's mostly what the gun is on it that marks the two out so they're very similar production on it and that's what commonly th thought so i'm thinking maybe they're just trying to differentiate that special version we would recommend tutorials put out by strategy game dojo for um some excellent dives very good thanks for that link scale of, yes yeah so this is what i say um i have not got into the grand campaign because of this just a time not that i don't not interested it's just a time and i got so many other games and things to play matrix does produce so much stuff okay so here we can do a deliberate attack we're close enough to get support from our hq no we don't because we highlighted over that wall still like down um two to one that should be right well let's before we do we can take a look here okay now here's a proper panzer division few vehicles that are damaged that may come back in at some point um but we're talking about 60 panzer threes um 11 long barreled panzer fours 13 short barrel panzer fours and 38 panzer twos and then we can see some other vehicles and you know scout cars and whatnot so that is what is attacking this here okay they got routed these guys now we're gonna 
and I really haven't figured out what I'm going to do with all of the details of moving some of these central forces, but let's move up the third panzer division to here. No, you know, hmm. Uh, this is good. Mm. Yes, indecision time here. Do I? Yeah, I think I break this unit here. So we routed it. Very good. But that took a lot of effort. Up. You see, we just captured the depot. So we've captured the depot, pushed into here. Let's move these guys up to here. They're going to again fall back a little bit more. We're cutting the railways. Let's come here. No, not ready to push this turn. back it out. Okay, so we've kept these guys up here. We're going to move. Well, I don't know. I think it has command radius there. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. We don't have much in the way of that. So we've come around here. This is a bit open here. Um, we might move in one of some of these motorized forces. Now, the other thing we need to do here is, because this scenario is 17 turns and they would like us to get down to here, they didn't historically. So if you get down here, I have this on just standard difficulty settings, um, not the easy, but also not the harder ones. So this should be somewhat um, historical as they figure, at least that's what I'm figuring on all of this. So. This, his headquarters is there, so I want to bring him here. This is the Romanian Mountain Division here. That wouldn't look like maybe good enough. So let's, what do we have here? Two HQs and an infantry division. Okay. Um... This infantry division. Um, okay, they're commanding three. Fifth four. Who is this? Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's come here, and I want to let's move them to the fifth corps. This guy, he is, yes, to the mountain core. Let's move these two together here. Um, okay, so we've beaten them, routed them out. There. Either of them, yes, he can move in here and fully secure the port. You can't go over a stacking limit of three currently, or with the game, not currently, but just... Looking at what we could do with this unit here. So if we hit here, it should be an easy attack. With the 
deliberate um no it's not not enough action Okay, so not enough action points for a second or for a deliberate attack there. guys are just too weak because they're too separated into formations okay we also have the vinking division which is going to be a heavy hitting division i was hoping to use that Just one of these. Okay, so they held. I didn't do a deliberate attack. Maybe I should have. Can I still do one? No. Okay. They retreated only, but we are pushing them. We're dislodging their forces. I still haven't used my main punch, as it were. Yep, yeah, supply is a big issue. Um, once you do stuff once or twice, it really becomes clear. Yeah, you really have to play the game. Um... You can look here, I have it just um, sort of currently generally set to supply so you can see the little um, setups here, but um, you can look at um, fuel, you can look um, at ammo, and whatnot. So we're going back to here, just give you generally supplies. And this is also influencing my attacks. Here I'm trying to cut the idea of Russian supply, Soviet supplies. They're probably going to be supplied from the south too, but wanting to um, cut this railway line here. But I'm also worried about this railway line here and uh, here because I want to, as we come in here, to have um, uh, you know supply coming down through the railway. So you need to keep that in mind. You do not want to just say push in a bunch of forces this way across this open expanse and think that you're going to get continue to get good supply. You need to um, keep the railway lines. And that's what this um, unit here will um, help you repair once you capture. Because you can see here now, and I'm just looking at this now, we can see um, what railway, the railway lines that are, I don't know what any color, the sort of orangish, no, more reddish color, I don't know, what do you want to call this color overlay? Those, those are railway lines that are not yet um, working for us. So keep that in mind. Really hoping to push in. Okay. Um, 
pushing into the rear here. Let's see if these, no, I want, yeah, these two divisions. Not good enough, not good enough. Not two divisions, they're, they're all one division. Uh, I just, okay, shattered, good. I just wanted to overdo that, quite honestly. But I didn't want to half-ass it and... to be. Without. I want to make sure I'm keeping that up close enough. Now let's see, no close, yes, good. I want to get that security unit here because we do have the thing here. Just to keep something unfortunate from happening. The Naval Infantry Brigade has been routed. Pushing the headquarters back. Hit R in the status of the rail lines. Okay, yes. But um, when you also hit this unit here, it will tell you what needs to be repaired. I'm just plotting here. Okay, I, and this is sort of the cut off isolated unit, which I figured was gonna happen. Um, Okay, 13th Panzer Division. Oh, we need the thinking instead. Oh, well. Um, I don't know that that is a bad thing. All right, I think we can hit both of these. Let's move. This is a Slovakian mobile division. So they're just battered and out of the way. They've come down to there for us. That would leave us with some action points still. Not enough action points for that, and I don't need a one to one attack right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on, move this guy to here, and then we're going to repair the railway line. Then we're going to move the guy to here, or unit, and we're going to repair the railway line. And so we way to clear off some of the big stacks. Now we can only repair what we held at the beginning of the turn, not what we're going to be holding or what we've taken this turn. So we're going to, we only have three points left. Um, well, let's, let's get to here and repair it. We use up our action points. There we go. So that'll give us a bit more rail push into here. 
Hello, Pino. How you doing, my friend? How you doing? Okay, um... Some of these units will free up later, I do believe. Um, because these have zero action points. I can't do anything. They're just these um, Romanian cavalry who are just sitting there. Okay. So I think that it, well, let's, we can move the HPs up a little bit. No, I don't want to move them too far. We'll move them just to there. Um, these guys are keeping all of them covered. Right. So we are covered. We are coming around here. Um, linking up the railways that I think are critical with this. Right. Let's end this turn. Oh, um, no. Uh, what we need to do also is here is a yeah allow ai to manage um, depots yes there we go we're going to allow that because you can again do the depot management in more detail um yes in turn again we're having the air which is doing um air transfer you know, freight transport now on um, ai And you can see the JU-52s are being escorted by some 109s, Messerschmitt fighters. They're looking at the yeah, air directives for the Soviets. They took two losses when the platform operation looks like. Okay, so turn summary here. Um, friendly losses, we lost three tanks. Um, I don't know, 118 aircraft, um, 27 um, artillery pieces of various sorts, and um, 4,500 approximately men. All right. Um, okay. Um, not exactly sure why we took so heavy air losses, but again, I'm letting that up for the AI to 